Hello everybody and welcome to Korakuen. This is right across from the Tokyo Dome and in this episode I'm going to be taking you to the Ume Plum Blossoms. This is one of the top spots, I'd say top three in the city, maybe even number one. It's easy to find this because you just have to go to the Tokyo Dome. You see it right there? Just right there, there's the dome. And you can even see the, the lefts on the left side, the roller coaster. So there's a, a bit of a theme park called the Korakuen. How you doing everybody? So yeah, I had a little problem with the signal out where the, the ume blossoms are. So I pre-took some of the ume blossoms. We're gonna go over there and just try to test to see whether or not there really is a signal. But first uh, I wanna show you the ume blossom experience here. This is where I am right now. Check out the map. Boom. So this is uh, this is Koraku, and you can see right next to the Tokyo Dome. the co The park is called Koi uh, Koishikawa Koraku and Garden. Oh, right here. I'm right here. I'm right here. Yeah. Tokyo Dome is right next to there. This is a 17th century, 1600s garden uh, created by a daimyo from the Tokugawa family of the Mito clan. Mito being the city just in the north. Mito has one of the top three gardens in the entire country of Japan. So if you're if you're in Japan for a few days and you're, and you're really interested in ume blossoms like, like I am, you wanna make that pilgrimage because this is the number one spot to Mito. You can get it, there's no Shinkansen there, but you can catch the um, um, Joban line. There's some express trains up there. It gets you up there in like a, like a less than an hour, 80 minutes, I think. Yeah, and then you can walk from the station to the garden. The emperor often goes there um, and it's a really, it's a strolling garden, you can feel it. But this one is really good if you're in Tokyo. Let me get rid of this here. Yeah, so here's the garden. It's just over here, so if you come in, I came in through the west gate, I think, right? You can take a look here. This is what it looks like, my experience going to the garden. This is the area with no signal of Korakuen that has the cherry blossoms, or sorry, the ume plum blossoms here. They should be even better in the next three or four days. It's a warm day in, to in uh, Tokyo today. Yesterday was even warmer with the sun coming through. But I love the ume blossoms. You can just feel it, right? The spring fever is, is so close. Look like popcorn. The ume blossoms are smaller than most varieties of the cherry blossoms, but there's so many varieties of, of sakura cherry blossom trees that uh, it's, it's, it's hard to know, but I can usually tell the ume blossoms by the darker color of the bark and the, and the stronger limbs on it. This one, different varieties uh, come out at different times. You can see this one. Oh, hey, how you doing? Probably gonna come Thank out you. in, a, in a, a few days and show itself. Thank you. Just budding right now. Wow. Spring is just such an amazing time in, in uh, Japan. Raise your hand if you're playing Sakura Sakura, the song in your in your head right now. Because <laughs> you, you can feel it. There's a place over there to get some mochi, which is really amazing. And uh, oh, look at this tree right here. This is absolutely beautiful. Oh, the this sun coming out, backlighting it just a little bit, so delicate. can smell it. There's a, a lot of the trees will have these tags here that will tell you exactly the kind it is. I can't understand that. And it is this pretty from around the middle of February to the first week in March. And then there are also cherry blossoms here in this park. So there are many reasons to come here. All throughout the year.
Yeah, so there you go. Uh, the signal, it, it's just about 150 meters this way, walking there. We're going to challenge and try to go over there. But I wanted to start this off with a signal to make sure that, you know, this is a live stream. Uh, let, let's look at this tree in particular. This is right near the entrance of where I came in from, Iidabashi Station. This thing. Ah, oh, man. I, I just love trees, and the Japanese gardens give so much respect to it. This lake here, according to the sign, Hitotsu Matsu. Matsu meaning like a, a pine tree. Um, the Daisensui or Great Pond is meant to resemble Lake Biwa and the largest lake in Japan. Hitotsu Matsu, the pine tree on its bank, has been linked, uh, likened to uh, Karasaki no Hitotsu Matsu, the famous single pine at Karasaki on the shore of Lake Biwa. And I love how they've made it. It almost looks like a Christmas tree in a way, right? Because of the shape of it, the cone. But they do this for many reasons. One I think is probably to keep the crows and the birds out of it to give respect, but they also keep the trunk. I, I heard that this is one way to keep it warm, to preserve the moisture and to make the tree um, uh, live longer. But what is the most striking of them all? Not the fact that it's covered in these strings. To me, to me, is the shape of the trunk. Do you see this? It's like a snake or a dragon. It is just awesome. Champagne, champagne sumo night. Thank you so much. I would go for cherry sake. <laughs> and Rainier loves Japan. Thank you. This is the Umi Blossoms, Rainier. but I can feel the Sakura already. We're just gonna pan up here. Just look at this, so amazing. I don't, I don't think if it's, if it's giant, I'm not sure if it's a bonsai. This is too big to be a bonsai. The whole meaning of bonsai is to be a potted plant. Bon, I believe is the, is the meaning for the, the pot. Wow. In the distance, you can hear something going on over at Tokyo Dome. All right, I got a little bit more to show you here. Of course I do. So how much, this garden is not free and I, it, it's, it's probably better that way so they can maintain it, which they do so well. Here's the price. It's uh, 300 yen for entrance and if you're uh, over 65, you get a discount. And if you're a kid like Leo, it's free. Here's a map just to give you an idea really quickly. I'll keep this up for a little while. Something's going over there. I hear organ music. Tokyo Dome is just right there. Do you see it? They get organ music going on. So something's happening inside there. Maybe concert today. It is Sunday after all. And you can see also the, um, the roller coaster Thunder Dolphin, I believe it's called just hovering over the entire park. I'm not sure the daimyo wanted that, but <laughs> Korakuen is uh, it's a pretty special place. You can see the map here. The, the lake in the middle resembles Lake Biwa, which is in Shiga Prefecture, the largest lake in, in, in Japan, right in the center. And the garden is, is a really beautiful strolling garden, again, from the 17th century. I hope this isn't copyrighted music. You know how I feel about that. Um, let me show you. Oh, look at the ducks! Ah! Whoa! Maybe we'll see some turtles. Why am I so excited by ducks? There's got to be more living in those rocks. All right, let me show you. Hey, Linda Marita's here! Pick up some sakura mochi on the way home. There's some over there, but there's no signal. So I I'm going to go and definitely do, uh, do that. Here's some more um, cherry blossoms for those that... Uh, uh, sorry, Umi Blossoms from my visit uh, where there's no signal. Oh, look at this one. It's like standing up on its hind legs, it looks like. It doesn't go wide, it goes up. 
That's really striking. Let's just spend a little bit of time here and, and show some appreciation. The aesthetics of this tree, wow. You really see it when you go up. And this one is a really stunning, like, um, I don't even know what the color would be. I guess ume. Wow. Sometimes if you come a little bit too early for the cherry blossoms and you catch the ume blossoms, it could even be more impactful. It just depends because I love the colors of it. Look at this one. It's such a deep, like a deep red purple. Right? There's a pink one over there and a kind of an off-white here. against the street here. Wow. You know, another thing that I, I, I'm just noticing now that makes the ume blossoms more striking are the fact that all the trees around them, they haven't started budding yet. The green trees, the one with the green leaves, right? They're still Dark. So when you get the cherry, the uh, umi blossoms here, the setting, the background is is much darker. So the the colors do strike so much more from the contrast. It's one of the things that uh, I guess it you, you don't really start to. This one is just about to bloom here. That you don't r really recognize until you really walk around and, and get deep into each one of the blossoms. And here we are, we're back. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try, we're gonna now walk over in that direction and see perhaps live if we can do, I just took that five minutes ago, so, uh, I wanted to make sure we had really good signal so you could see this in 1080p. It, it'll, it might break apart over there. Uh, it, it's, right now they're doing some sort of rehearsals in the Tokyo Dome. From this angle now, you can see the Tokyo Dome Hotel. They got some pretty interesting restaurants up there with views of Tokyo. You see there's no other skyscrapers in the area, so the view from the top of the Tokyo Dome Hotel is really awesome. There's one, I think it was like the Arts Cafe or something. I've been there a few times. Um, really good place to take somebody on a special birthday might have done that with Kanai, I think. Uh, there's Tokyo Dome, and then there's the uh, Thunder Dolphin. And uh, the Bunkyo Center, do you see that round window? You get one of the best views of the city of Tokyo there. There's some new buildings in the way, but you can see all the way to Mount Fuji with Shinjuku in the background. It's free, that observation tower. So I highly recommend if you're here to, to, to go for a visit to get snap some photos of the city of Tokyo from there. Um, amazing. I actually have a couple of live streams from, from that point, I believe. All right, let's do this. 
Let's do this. Here's my ticket. That's what it looks like. 300 yen. You could pay by Suica card, which I thought was pretty cool. Here's the entrance. So it's open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, it's, uh, again, 300 yen for adults. And there's the booth in the entrance. And I, I guess it's, those are the pictures of the, um, of the uh, Tokugawa family, the daimyo who started this. I can't remember. There's so many of them. But I actually have a live stream from the Tokugawa Museum in Mito and am friends with the Tokugawa, <laughs> Mr. Tokugawa was there. I have his, his phone number and business card and he introduced me around there. And then afterwards, I went there with Jennifer, a friend of mine and, and uh, uh, to, Mr. Tokugawa, Tokugawa-san uh, bought us unagi from a delivery place nearby, the best in Mito. And Jennifer and I ate our unagi in the garden of his private, his family garden, which is insane. It's kind of cool to say one of your friend's names is, is Tokugawa. <laughs> He's the 15th generation of the Mito clan. Awesome. That was a, a four or five years ago. There's a live stream um, when we're inside that museum. You should check that out if you're interested in Japanese history because the, so, there's a couple of swords in there that are pretty amazing. I love this job. Wow, this is a strolling garden. This is one of the best in Japan, in uh, Tokyo. Japan, just, just, there's just too many places to, and with a lot more space than this. But back in the Edo period, which is the 17th century, that's when this garden was made. Um, like there was a lot of daimyo, a lot of the, was it Baifuku? The, the uh, representatives from all the regions of Tokyo under one shogun, which is the Tokugawa shogunate. And uh, you know, the daimyo had a lot of money and resources and they lived here and they wanted to, you know, part of the time and they wanted to make Tokyo or Edo at the time really beautiful and they did. And I'm glad that despite World War II when a lot of the things went up and, in, in, you know, was smoke March 10th and 11th, which is the anniversary is coming up, 76th anniversary, 77th anniversary. Um, places like this still exist with a lot of history. You don't find that in Tokyo very You can go up here. There's some beautiful trees, or you can go walk past this waterfall, which we're gonna do here. And the ume trees are just over there. And and Linda, that's that's the mochi booth. We can try to go there, but the single oh, there's the mochi on the stick. Do you see that around a fire? Wow. Okay, maybe we'll we'll see if the signal goes. There's a reason why. There's a reason why I had to play the Ume Blossoms first and film it because I'm just not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if there. Uh, there's some koi in this pond as well, but I, I guess it's winter and they're hibernating. I'm not sure. <laughs> they don't seem too active. This is the third or fourth time I've been here, not too often. Oh, this is one of those frogger type of things, isn't it? Or you have to jump on the rocks. The Shiraito no Taki. Taki means uh, waterfall in Japanese. This waterfall was given the name Shirai, Shiraito no Taki, which means white thread falls for the resemblance of the thousand white threads. That's true. You can see the thousands of white threads. Very well done, Mr. Man who named this, or woman who named this. Shall we enter? Oh. Very cool. Taking wild birds and stream for a long time. So they're just saying it's a strolling park, so don't stay in one place for too long.
don't think people fall in very often. All right, we're gonna go to the, the uh, Ume Blossoms. Let's hope, one, I don't fall in, and then two, there's a signal. Wow, you can really hear the practice going on at Tokyo Dome. Can anyone look on online and see who's playing at the Tokyo Dome? Is it somebody, somebody famous? There's a concert going on. I think next week is the World Japan uh, Baseball Tournament where Japan plays against a bunch of other countries. The U.S. Yu Davish is one of the pitchers and he's going to be, the spotlight's on him as he plays against the U.S. It's going to be fun. Fingers crossed that we get any kind of a signal. The Ume Blossoms are on the left side. And I will go, Linda, and get some mochi if the signal holds. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Either online or offline. I don't know. I'm going to always give it a try. Uh, Pirate Queen says red hot chili peppers. What? No way. I'd be cool just standing outside there and, and dancing outside the Tokyo Dome. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to get tickets. Red hot chili peppers are here. What? All right, there's where I filmed earlier. In the distance, you can see the uh, popcorn colors of the pink, magenta, red, deep purple, white. Red Hot Chili Peppers at 5.30. No way, they're here. What am I doing here? Somebody let me in. I, I grew up on the chili peppers. I went through college with chili peppers. How many times did I sit on a friend's balcony or um, porch at Ohio State drinking a bush light? Listen to that. You drank what you could get at 21. All right, let's go see if we can get some food here. Um, Linda, fingers crossed. I'm, I'm starving and mochi sounds good. Mask on. They should have red hot chili peppers here. Seriously. Yeah, bush latte. <laughs> The line is quite long. Oh, they have Kuromitsu Kinako Aji. Kinako is roast, roasted soybean powder with black honey. Oh man. Kurumi, which is a, a chestnuts, chestnut miso flavored. And Azuki bean, red beans. It's 500 yen, that's pretty affordable. But the service is quite slow, so I'm not sure if we can we can manage this. Whatever's going on with the chili peppers, it sounds really cool. Wow! Did you see that dongo stick? I'm going for the Kuromitsu Kinako, but the closer I get, the different flavors I see. Set with Amazake. Amazake. Who wants Amazake? Raise your hands.
stuff for the uh, Kuromitsu Kinako with Amazake set. What do you guys think? They have it with tea, which I think is just like an ocha, but. Easy vlog, want some Amazake. Truly miss ya. In for the Amazake. Saw so a couple of hand raises. Jonathan Chong just wants a dongle. <laughs> Pikayo. What's that blooming around the background? That would be Ume Blossoms. Jason's looking for the Kinako. Gotcha, Jason. Gosh, the chili peppers are loud. Wow. He's really doing a good job with the painting. He's an artist. Oh, they have coffee too. I'm tempted. All right, I'm going Amazake, Amazake. Thank you, Linda Morita, for uh, sponsoring this. And Dasha Skidmore, thank you. That absolutely does. It's fun to share a little ume blossom snack. These are the foods of the of the season. Oh, you can get mochi any time of the year. It's most famous at New Year, where people make it themselves. <laughs> oh, we're next. That's interesting. They actually have to cut the sticks. Kuromitsu Kinako Amazake Set. It's nice and warm here. put in the kinako. Amazaki is deep inside there. Oh, I can feel the heat. Wow! Alright, I found a seat over here. Whoa, you can hear the chili peppers! Wow! Do you hear them playing in the background? Alright, I got a, I have a, a stick. I think I can get, um, I could eat this with you guys and describe the taste um, because you're not here with me. I would give you a bite. 
I can say that because you're not here, but if you were here, I would, I'm not sure if I would give you a real bite, but, <laughs> but if you're not here, I could, I could say I might give you a bite. I don't know, would you give, would you give you guys a bite? I don't know, there's a lot of people. It's not fair if I share with, with one or two and I don't share with everybody. All right, I don't know how this is gonna hold, but it is a solution. It could hold might if it falls all right uh, can you tell what song they're playing I'm not sure like after around 1995 I, I didn't really listen to the chili peppers too much because I you know I moved here I was a uh, black sugar sex magic I, I have that album it's one of my favorites look at this thing oh baby this is what it's all about Never mind the blossoms. It's the Kuromitsu. What? Look at this. Hey, Danny. I gotta catch up with you, buddy. On the, we gotta we gotta talk. Look at the the Kuromitsu on there. What? Oh, look at that. Black honey, baby. And that's so roasted soybean powder. So worth it. You're not supposed to talk with your mouth full, but what can I do? I got chili peppers playing in the background. It's copyright. I can't copyright that because it's just like blur. It's like a, if you put a mosaic over an image, you can't really see it, but you know what it is. It's sort of what this is, right? We know it's chili peppers now because someone told me, but it's so blurred. You can't really, you can't claim that. All right, guys. Um, this is the Amazake. I don't know how I'm gonna show this to you, but I'm gonna try. I gotta pan down. You can see it's got the, the um, rice in it. It's chunky, and that's the way I like it. All right, if you don't, it's your problem. Chunky. Yeah, you know, um, I, I have brown eyes, but it, they almost look hazel in the sun and the fact that this is a, a um first of all my, they're not bloodshot so i did sleep okay last night but in the sun they do look somewhat green <sighs> kind of close can you back away a little bit it seems a little i had this um so I, I guess I could tell you stories as I'm enjoying this here. So I went to Ohio State University, you all know that, and uh, I didn't like mathematics in high school. I had some bad teachers. And then when I got to college around the, my junior year, I started to love math. It was just a challenge. And, I had, and the reason why was because I had some really great professors. One of the professors um, came from Hungary. He was a teaching assistant. Uh, um, Hungarian spoke, his English is really unique and he, was, he seemed like an interesting guy. So we'd have lunch sometimes, but whenever I crossed the, you know, past the oval and went, went around that part of the, the campus, he was one of these close talkers where he'd, he'd, he'd get really right into your face and he would talk to you like this. It just was weird. It was, it was, it was as though he didn't have any borders. I don't know if that's a Hungarian thing. I've been to Budapest many times, but I haven't traveled around. too much talking here. Shatrio, thank you. 
I must shoot mochi properly or choke. You don't want to see the horror. Oh man. I don't think we can chalk that up to being Eastern European, Beverly, because I have some really good friends in Romania. I've been through Bulgaria, Poland, Czech Republic. I maybe I think just Hungary is is even the language Hungarian is so cool. It's it's like there's no it's not a romance language. It's just so different. Like Romania is a romance language. It goes with French, Italian, Spanish, and Romanian. A little bit of Latin in there because they have a neuter case. But Hungarian is just way out there. So I think the culture is different too. Which is awesome. Satrio, thank you. I've been editing. I, I have. I need. I've been trying to get a haircut too. Survival. All right. It looks like we have a signal here. We, I'm going to take you now to. Um, yeah, Hungarian is very related to to Finnish, which is weird because they're not very close, right? I have one more dango. Um, this is the hardest one because you can't go full on straight. can't deep throat this stick so you have to can I did cut my hair last time I didn't go to the barber but she I can't have her cut it two times in a row. We can't get too comfortable with that. I gotta go to my barber. I've been going to the same place for 14 years. Can't say Kanai did a bad job, but she did a good, she did a good job, she did a good job. I think it was the third time she cut my hair. Joshua, I have I had buzz cuts in, in college a little bit. It's not not the look I'm going for. Remember, everybody was getting it. Uh, there was a a guy who was in the uh, ROTC, R O T C, and he was given free haircuts in the bathroom of the dormitory. And I just happened to, to use. He had to go, so I was there. He goes, "Hey, you you want a haircut?" And he said, "Okay." <laughs> he just kept going. He just kept going. But he gave me a little bit in the front, like a poof. I wasn't full on ROTC, but I remember at night just playing with it because it felt different. You know? Maybe I'll do it again, but there's not as much up there as there used to be. It's part of getting old. You gotta own it, you know? start losing it, you own it. The moment you start getting shy about it, wear a hat. It's all right. Can't do that, you gotta own it. Man up. It's easier said than done. separate the trash here. Uh, I'm gonna stroll with this for a little bit, but um, let's try, as, as you all are you, <laughs> discuss how I should cut my hair next time. Definitely gonna chop down. We're gonna try to enter the dragon here. Right straight ahead, you can see the cherry blossom. And I did not have a signal last, sorry, the ume blossoms, I apologize. It's, it's hard, because I got spring fever, uh, premature spring fever. That should be the name of the this uh, live stream. Gazzy music and lifestyles are in here. The music makes it feel like an acid trip video. Well, not having done that before, <laughs> I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to err on, on, on the side of, of of your experience.
So let's go in here and just take a look at it. I apologize that the signal cuts out. And if it does, then perhaps this live stream will, will be ending. But this was a lot of fun and you, it's just really fun to share this stuff with you. The Japanese culture to walk through the parks, go to places that perhaps if you're in Tokyo, you'll come and visit this. But this is certainly one of the top Ume Blossom parks uh, in Tokyo. I, I said it right this time. Tokyo. Two syllables, not Tokyo. Two syllables, Tokyo. There you go. That does not happen very often. When you speak in English, you speak English the way you say the Japanese words the way you learned it. So. Wow. Enjoy the Ume Blossoms without me talking for one minute with the sweet sounds of an acid trip happening across the way at the Tokyo Dome. Compliments of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Okay, silence. chirping and the members of the chili peppers playing umi blossoms one prime lens here on the iPhone. Let's go see what we can see. And snort what we can snort, which is the Umi Blossoms. I will tell you if they have a scent, and they do. <laughs> I do have a little bit of hay fever from the, the uh, cedar, Japanese cedar just started, to, um, and the uh, butakusa, which is like uh, this weed, gives off an awful pollen, and uh, I'm starting to feel it. Wow, look at this. This is um, the striking color of the magenta, purple, deep purple variety of the Umi Blossoms. There are so many different varieties of them, so you're going to get different colors. Uh, I'm going to cut to the chase. There's another one around the side here that I think is really good. All right, just fingers crossed that the signal keeps on being good. This is the one that looks like it's standing on its hind legs. Satrio, people start to act like zombies. From the music <laughs> like I would not be surprised John would be do good in a, in a zombie apocalypse I've studied and I have no problems with wielding a, a hammer or a really large wrench okay All right, here's the one one of my favorites this is the one that's standing up on its hind legs do you see that some blue sky in the background such a delicate pink. I think this one looks better wide, doesn't it? And right behind it is the... Uh, there's a, another really deep uh, red-purple. Does anyone know what that color is? Could somebody do a, um, a color picker? Screenshot and color pick it? <laughs> I don't know.
Sounds like it's Flea, right? Flea is the one of the guitarists. Little guy. Goes a little crazy. All right, I guess the signal is doing okay here. This one is still budding. Oh, this is my favorite. This is my second favorite one. Check it out. Look at this. Wow. Again, I said this earlier. I noticed it, but because I think they're taking a picture here. For me, because the other trees don't have leaves yet, there's something really striking. The contrasts are more amazing because it's it's everything is really dark brown and black in the back. And the, the colors of the umi blossoms just pop because of that contrast. The cherry blossoms, the other trees started to bud and, and there's more green around them. So you don't get as much, but the, the, the white around it, I think is more striking with the green. So in that sense, there's some, some pluses and, and, and minuses, but I guess, the, Mother Mother Nature and, and God got it right, you know? I mean, the only blossoms should bloom before the cherry blossoms, and they, you know, they do. Well done. Of course, <laughs> well done. To, yeah. Sometimes you get it right. All right, so there you go. I hope that this, I'm glad that the signal st stuck in there. Uh, again, this is one of the best uh, parks for ume blossoms, but it also has cherry blossoms, sakura, and other, uh, in, in autumn, it's really beautiful as well. There's another section of it, but this is a 17th century strolling park, one of the top three in Tokyo. The other ones might be uh, uh, Hamarikyu, which is uh, near Shimbashi and Shiodome. That's a really big park, and I've gotten lost in there before. And the other park is uh, Rikugien, which is uh, up in the north part of Tokyo, uh, a little bit past Ueno on the Yamanote line. That's a wonderful park for cherry blossoms, and then in the fall with this, the autumn colors. So there you go, it's, it's start, starting to get pixelated. Thanks everybody for watching. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. Uh, do click the like button. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoy this. Encourage me to go to another um, Ume Blossom spot maybe next week. I'll take you along and uh, see you in another live stream real soon. Some uploaded videos are on the way. I'm slaving away. It's going to be a really great year.